Welcome to Turbo.Ready, my name's Michael and in this video I'm going to show you how you can paint the red Megarama you see on the back of the box. If you haven't seen it already, I previously made a tutorial on how you can paint the yellow Megarama you see on the front of the box. And seeing as I still had a couple of Mega Knobs left over, I thought it would be a cool idea to have a go at painting the red colour scheme as well. When it came to putting the Mega Knob together, I chose to build it in sub-assemblies. This just means I don't fully build the miniature and leave parts of it separated to make it easier to paint. I'm also going to mount the parts to these plastic shot glasses, which will give me something to hold on to while painting. I used to use these wooden Jenga blocks, but they keep falling over. Don't worry, I didn't forget to drill out the gun barrel. Now that's done, I'm ready to undercoat the Mega Knob and show you how I painted it. Here are the paints I used to paint the Mega Knob, which I've also put in the description below. I've also included what brushes I've used and what I used them for. I gave the miniature a spray undercoat of grey surf first. This is going to create a more vibrant red, which I prefer. You can start with the Mephiston red spray undercoat first though if you wanted, it's up to you. The red I'm using for the base colour is obviously going to be Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm using a flat brush to get the first layer down. It's always a good idea to thin your paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. I also remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper because I want to paint multiple thin layers to get a nicer finish. Keep your brush moving, try not to go over any areas you've already painted, then let that layer dry. And when I was ready to paint another layer, I changed to a normal brush. This will give you more control and allow you to get any areas you may have missed with the flat brush. I'm now going to give the armour a dry brush, a wild rider red, to give the armour some texture and to start bringing out all that detail. Work the paint into the brush first and then remove most of it using some kitchen paper. You then want to move the brush quickly in different directions against all the edges. This is a quick way to start adding some interest and definition to the armour. Red can look quite desaturated and dull when painted, so I'm now going to give the armour a glaze which is going to help the red to become much more richer in colour. To make the glaze I'm using Flesh Terror's Red Contrast and adding twice the amount of Lamy Medium. And I'm using Lamy Medium because it's more matte than the Contrast Medium. You don't want to treat this like a wash, just go over the red armour like you would if you were painting a layer. Let it dry and hopefully you can see the difference it's made to the red. Before I finish painting the red armour, I'm going to paint all the other details of the miniature. I begin by painting any details I want to be metallic with iron hand steel. And then some Sycorax bronze after that on some of these areas to be more interesting. And once that's done, give these areas a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Then layer both the silver and bronze back up, leaving some of the Agrax Earthshade still visible. And finally highlight with some Stormhouse Silver. Paint all the cables, choose whatever colours you think work best. Then wash these areas at the same time with Agrax Earthshade. And finally, highlight everything with your shabti bone. With the details finished, I can now finish the red armour. The red armour is going to need some more definition, so I'm going to do a recess shade using Norn Oil. A recess shade is done by putting the wash directly into the areas you want shaded, rather than using the wash all over the miniature. Go around the armour picking out all the joins, scratches and rivets. And for more control using the wash, I'm using the STC glaze brush which is great for this technique. You can see the shade has helped separate the detail making it easier to see. It's now time to highlight the armour and I'm going to be using some Fire Dragon Bright to do this. And the easiest thing to do is to angle your brush against an edge and run your brush along it to create the highlights. The armour is pretty blocky so you should be able to get away with doing this for most of it. For the places you can't do this, take your time and paint thin lines to create the highlights. To really make the highlights pop, you can use some flash kitsch yellow to create some spot highlights. Don't go crazy, just paint little dots of yellow on some of the corners and paint some of the edges you want to be more pronounced. I 
Highlighting does take a lot of time and practice, but it really helps to bring out all the details on your miniatures. To paint the yellow parts of the Mega Armor, I start by mixing an equal amount of Avalon Sunset and Flash Kits Yellow together. This lets me take advantage of the great coverage Avalon Sunset has without it being as dark, making it easier to get a brighter yellow. Pick out the panels you want to be yellow using this mix. Paint a layer of Flash Kits Yellow, then pick out any rivets and recesses with Agrax Earth Shade. Finally, highlight with Dawn Yellow. If you have any panels you want to paint black, just use a bad and black first, and then finish with a highlight of Dawnstone. You could call it a day here and say the armour is finished, but I want to show you a few little things to help make your Mega Knob look even better. If you want your Mega Knob to look like it's part of the Evil Sons clan, then you're going to want to paint some yellow flames. Start by painting some wiggly lines using the yellow mix from earlier, spacing them out a little and making them different lengths. And once you're happy with your wiggly lines, all you need to do is thicken them up making them gradually thicker towards the bottom, making sure to join them together. I now want to make the armour look a bit more interesting, so using some Nylac Oxide, I'll paint this into some of the recesses and around some of the rivets of the armour. And the last thing I want to do is to use some Rhinoxide to create some chips and scratches along the edges of the armour. I'll just use the tip of my brush with a dabbing motion to create the chips and scratches. The Red Mega Armour is now finished and hopefully you can now go away and paint all the Red Mega Armour you've always wanted to. If you want to see how I paint other Rocky things, there are plenty of other tutorials on my channel. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and got something useful from it. And if you did, please like the video, it shows YouTube you enjoyed it and it'll be shared out to more people. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.